Good morning. My name is Bud Freund. I am a SCORE counselor in uh, Fairfield County, and we tried to do this Instagram uh, webinar last Tuesday and unfortunately ran into some technical difficulties. Uh, Lorraine Duncan has graciously agreed to do a redo, and without further ado, please take it away, Lorraine. Okay. Thank you, Bud, and SCORE for allowing me to teach you a little bit about Instagram for business. I um, thank you all for re-listening to this and a little bit about me before we go on to the really good stuff. I'm Lorraine, X, Lorraine Duncan, and um, I have a business called BizGlen Social. I've been doing social media marketing and managing and consulting for over three years now. And uh, before, prior to that, I used to uh, – I had a coaching business, a business coaching business, and I have a numerous experience in um, helping people with their businesses. Um, when I'm not doing biz on social, I'm hanging out with my family. Um, that I really, um, I love to be with people and just love to hang out with people, and and I think that's more important than being online all the time. But there's a place and a time for being online, and different ways to be growing your business. So um, I just encourage you to learn all you can um, about Instagram today. Um, I also am an author of Shout It Out. It's a social media marketing guide for business owners, um, and you can get that book on Amazon. So I always encourage my audience to take some notes, but more importantly, um, I really – like people to take something they've learned today and implement it right away. And um, so without further ado, here we go. The necessities of Instagram. So you need two things, and really you only need one thing. You need an iPhone or an Android, and um, they have a camera on it. And because Instagram is an app, you need to load the Instagram app onto your phone. And you can do everything from the app on your phone. Now, really importantly um, is that you can actually um, access Instagram from your computer, but you just can't, you know, your laptop or your desktop, but you just can't post for it. But I use my laptop and my desktop actually to do research. And I'm going to share a little bit more about how to research things on Instagram it's a lot easier than doing it on your phone. Um, I also use, I, I take a lot of pictures, um, so I use a camera too, and I use a um, software called Dropbox to load my pictures onto Dropbox, and then sometimes I grab pictures from Dropbox to, to use in my Instagram app. So I always like to make sure everybody asks these questions before, you have to know, first of all, you have to know why you're going to be on Instagram. And with any social media platform, I really highly recommend these few questions. And one is, what do I want to accomplish through Instagram? You need to write that down is because you want to know exactly what you want to accomplish. Is it that you want more followers, more people con connecting to more people? Is it that you'd like to have some warm leads? Is it, like, is it you just want to get yourself out there and, and start using the app because you've heard such good things about it? So, Think about what you want to accomplish. I mean, eventually, as a business owner, it, you want to lead it more to just gathering a bunch of people um, on your app. You want, you, know, you want to make sure that the people that you're gathering are targeted, and you want to make sure that um, you're able to get some, eventually get a client out of it. So the next question is very important because I feel that you don't want to really be wasting your time. How much time do you want to spend on Instagram? I, I mean, I recommend this is what I do. So after I look at my email in the morning, uh, I go on to LinkedIn, and then after LinkedIn, I go on to Facebook, and then I go on to Instagram. And that's it until the afternoon, unless I'm posting something strategic on my, on my Instagram account. The next is, is who's going to ex execute your Instagram strategy. So because it's on your phone, it's, so, it's easiest to be accessed by you. Of course, somebody else, a manager or consultant can have it on, on um, their phone too, 
and it's just as easy to execute the Instagram strategy. So if you're going to be on Instagram, you just have to know if you're going to be the one that's going to be doing the post and the strategic strategy in posting. So you figure that out ahead of time too. And then you're probably every, – everybody asks this question, and I asked it certainly for myself, is Instagram the best platform for my business? And the bottom line is, is I believe any business would do well on Instagram. One thing I noticed right away when I started using Instagram was that I automatically got more people to engage and to like my posts and just to be there all the time than I ever did on Facebook. And one of the reasons for that is hashtags, and we're going to discuss that later on in this webinar. And the next thing is, how do I know if my efforts are working? And what's great is when you switch your Instagram profile, which we're going to get to right now, um, over to a business profile, what happens is you're automatically um, allowed to see analytics. And that tells you right away. I mean, if you're only getting one you know, person looking at your post or whatever, that means that maybe you're not using the right hashtags. So again, when we get to hashtags, I will talk more about that. But let's talk about the profile right now. And um, so this is just uh, my front page here. And the bottom line is, is they have a picture, a bio, and a bunch of, um, you know, the pictures on the bottom. And so I'm kind of going to try to explain this the best I can without being interactive here. But the bottom line is, is you want to have, you don't want to have a selfie picture of yourself. And I don't recommend a company logo unless your, your, your company logo is noticed. So, for instance, if I was working for Coca-Cola, you know, everybody knows Coca-Cola. So having that company logo, everybody's going to be able to recognize Coca-Cola. The same with, like, for instance, Starbucks. Everybody recognizes them. And then, of course, Nike. And I can go on and on with the different icons that people use for, you know, the different logos that people use in their business that you would recognize right away. IBM is another one. The NFL, football is another one. So there's a bunch of, we all recognize certain logos. So I highly recommend use your picture so people can actually sort of see your face. It is kind of tiny, but the bottom line is, is that they could get the general gist of you, what you look like and stuff. And it's just more personal and social. So it actually puts a person in, in there, and it's really good for business. But the next thing is this little um, profile picture here. And depending, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the bio is the next important thing. And I, and I highly recommend that you just don't write anything there, that it's very strategic. You, you, you want to have a call to action on this bio, which is really simple. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the next slide because I believe, yes. Yeah. So this is when you, go, when you hit edit profile, this is the next page it's going to bring you to. So you want whatever you want your username to be. So my username is Bizgo on Social, so I put that there. And you can change that as much as you want. In other platforms, they only allow you to change your username once. But this, as long as it's available, you can change your username as much as you want. And the next thing is I always put a name, so, and then I use an emoji just to kind of get people's attention. So I've been using this question mark. Sometimes I switch it around. I do change my bio around depending what I'm promoting. So um, like for instance, right now I'm promoting um, a tool that I use. So I, I usually use a bit.ly link. So just to kind of show you what that looks like, um, you could just, you'll see here. This is the only clickable link besides if I'm adding someone actually in the post, the at sign and then whoever you're adding. That's, and I'm saying um, adding like AT, so at. So there's an at sign that people can do in a post that hyperlinks it, and when you click that, it actually goes to somebody's profile. So when I'm referring to something that I'm offering, I'm always sending people to my profile, which is an amazing thing because nobody knew how to do that until like somebody discovered, hey, we've got to get people to our profiles just in case they want to, you know, learn more. A lot of people, so with this Bitly link, the reason I use the Bitly link is what it is is a tracking link. So if you type in, you know, bitly.com, you'll be able to, uh, 
you know, create, you can create, you, you take the link that you want to put it, it shortens it up, you can actually customize it as long as nobody else has it. And it's a great way to track other than the analytics on um, Instagram. So it, it's just, you know, you want to make sure that whatever you're doing, and it's kind of part of strategy, so it's kind of I'm jumping ahead of myself with posting strategy, but you always want to make sure you're asking somebody to do something. I, I always use this um, illustration is that, you know, if somebody, um, if you were walking down the street and somebody got hit by a car and you know how the crowd starts gathering around, you wouldn't just yell out, you know, someone call 911. You would literally say, you would point your finger at a person and say, can you please call 911? Because if you just yell out, you know, can somebody call 911, everybody's going to assume everybody else is doing it. So you just want to make sure that when you're using a call to action, it, you want to make sure that you are asking somebody to do something. So in every, not in every post, but at least on your bio, you want to make sure you have a call to action. You need to always be asking someone to do something, whether it's learning more or check this out or check this link out or whatever you're, you're promoting, you, you want to make sure that it's out in front. You know, this is really simple. Sometimes I just have um, on my bio, I just have, you know, check out my, like, you know, free PDF on um, how to take the overwhelm out of social media, and it's just a link to my website. And I really don't have to guide it anymore because when you go to my website, the free PDF is available with a click of a button. It's right on the top of the fold. Um, you're probably wondering what the top of the fold is. When you go to somebody's website, the, the part you see is always referred to as the top of the fold. A lot of people will never scroll down. So if you have a bunch of links on the bottom that are really important to you on your website, you just want to make sure that they're on the top of the fold. And so, like I said, that when I guide them to my website, there's always something more that they could click. I ask them to down my free, you know, my free PDF. So the bottom line is, is if, if at all, if you're going to put something on your bio, at least make sure your website is on the, uh, on the um, bio. So I think that's all you really need to know about editing profile. Maybe a couple other things is, is that this, the business information here is all stuff that you filled out when you filled out the um, – when you signed on to um, Instagram. So the, the most important thing, though, is you want to just make sure you have a business page. And, that, and, the, and the cool thing about the business page is – so mine is a business page, and as you can see, it has call and email. So if you don't have this call or email on your page, you have not yet switched over to your business page. You need to have at least 10 posts on your personal profile page to have a business page. So they just want to make sure you're not like some kind of spammer or trying to just hack into everybody else's account. Um, Instagram is really strict. I also recommend when you're signing up for Instagram that you do a two-phase <clears throat> two authentication. Um, so this way it just prevents people from hacking into you. Um, when you go to the to, to sign in on the business pro um, to the business side of Instagram, um, some important things to know is that you have to have a, of course, you have to have a Facebook account. So you just want to make sure that you're linking your Facebook account to your business page on Instagram. So you could also do it to your personal page, but I actually linked it to my business page just because when I go over. Um, so when I cross promote, which is when you can use one post and then post it on Instagram, you can post it on Twitter, you can post it on LinkedIn, what, uh, Tumblr, there's a bunch of stuff that they give you that you can connect to that you're actually cross promoting to the right page. So that's that. Um, and now I'm going to move over to posting. Posting is a really important thing. It's a big part of, of Instagram, and that's why you're on it. So basically... You want to, um, I'm going to just do a few things. Uh, you should never run out of things to post on Instagram. I never have. So don't set any limited rules for yourself. Just express yourself and your business and see what people like. So the big thing is just be yourself. Don't, don't overthink posting on, you know, you could, there's so many things that you can post. Um, so don't overthink it. I just want to make this official statement from Instagram. So this is right on the Instagram site. Um, we can't provide you with any legal advice. 
If you're not sure that you are legally authorized to use the content, do not post it on Instagram. Posting copyrighted content without permission might be a violation of the law. And if you've already posted it, you should remove it from Instagram. So, I mean, my rule of thumb for me is I always just post my own stuff, so it is mine. However, if you're, like, reposting stuff, just make sure you have permission or at least give them credit. So, like, if I do share something from someone, I always give, like, I, I'll, I'll hashtag them, and I'll also, again, use the at sign, A-T, and bring it right to their, their profile. So what to post? Let's just see. You know, for, so first of all, be human. Not one of these robots or, you know, you have to think that you're a, a human first and not a, and not a business. So just be human. So you want to post your products that are in use. So if you have any products that you need to post or a service or, or something like that, just post that. The next thing you want to do, I think everybody likes to know what's going on behind the scenes. So if I'm doing something really excited, like if I'm at a convention or a trade show or I'm doing something for my business or, or doing something as my business, like you know participating in some kind of speaking event or something like that, I usually post that in my stories on, on Instagram and then also on my, on my regular posts. Um, your face. People like to see your face. So if you do, you know, take a picture of yourself. Put a little caption on it. Um, have fun with it. Quote. Okay. So, you know, there's, there's two sides of the story on quotes. Quotes are great. They're so motivational. They're so inspirational. But I always say if you're going to do quotes, make sure it's relevant to your business. So, for instance, like um, I could just give you a really great example. I always, if I'm going to post a quote, it's going to be related to either business marketing or social media marketing. I'm not going to post something about, you know, I don't know, sports, for instance, or, you know, politics or something, because it would make no sense in, in, in kind of what I do for business. So that would be, you know, what I would recommend if you're going to do quotes. So if you're a life coach, you could do those nice inspirational quotes. Um, if you're, if you're, even if you're business marketing, you know, if you if you're a business market, if you market to businesses or whatever, you know, time management. They're great quotes because that's the biggest thing people have trouble with in business is managing their time. You know, and if you could talk to a hundred business owners, bottom line is, is people would, the business owners would be saying, I don't have enough time, and and we all have enough time. It's just how we manage our time. So. You know, be creative with the quotes. Use humor. Be funny. Um, I love to see, you know, sometimes when people give you the backside of their lives, you know, a lot of funny things always happen around their kids. Kids do silly things and or something funny happens in business. I've had a lot of funny things happen in business. I, I did a, um, a live web, and a, a, like a live uh, thing on Instagram once, and I was, you know, just trusting in them that they were going to have there. And I was, I just wanted to plug in my phone and I had all, I had the gear to do that. But where we were having the conference, they did not have really great internet. So all my plans ahead of time, and you just had to laugh about it because, you know, it's like, so I had to, I always have slides on my, on my computer. So I just used the slides. So I wasn't able to go live though. And it's sometimes when you're doing Instagram and other social media platforms, you like to be able to go live so that, you know, I could show you a little bit more things. So short videos are in or it. That's where you could do short videos on Instagram under a minute. You could do uh, short videos on story with stories and IGTV. The bottom line is, is if you look at, especially the kids today, I mean, I have four of them, and my two boys are constantly use, looking at YouTube videos, and, you know, depending on what your market is, but everybody's watching YouTube videos. There's not a lot of people reading, unfortunately, anymore. You need to do some re – a lot of people need to do more reading, but they're gonna, they'd rather watch a short video than, than read a, a paragraph. So think about that when you're thinking about your marketing strategy is what kind of short, cute videos you can do. And here's the thing with, you know, like I talk about, you know, post your products in use. What a great way to post your product in use is by doing a short video on it. 
You know, so think about what product you can do a short video on. Um, so the next one is Throwback Thursday, or um, I switched it around because it has a T on the end. I'll go Throwback Tuesday, depending on what I want to do. But, you know, it's like in my field, it's like, you know, if you really kind of think about it, how far we've advanced there, you know, before before Facebook and Instagram, there wasn't, you know, before iPhones. So every once in a while I'll post something like, you know, a, a, a real telephone, you know, and, you know, now I'll actually post the first telephone and then a couple other things and just to see the progression of how it went. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Um, the other thing you can do is personal adventures. So, and and the only reason I do personal adventures is sometimes like when I'm, you know, like I went to New Mexico and I did some mountain climbing and stuff like that and hiking. But just to show that even up on a mountain, you could do social media. You can do Instagram. And, you know, sometimes I'll just, you, I could do in my personal adventures a short message about, like I did one time a post I was laying on the beach, and it was just basically I can do social media anywhere. And that is what's so awesome about being able to use social media. I mean, I can't reach out to 100 people in a networking group because I can't be there, but yet I can reach out to thousands and millions of people on social media. So the other thing is, another thing to post is just what's happening. Sometimes people just want to know what's going on in your business. What's next? You know, where will you be next? If you do a lot of speaking, then that's like really important um, because if you put a what's next, people will see that, oh, I can go to that. So think about that. Um, and just I wanted to kind of show you one post that I do that kind of shows you kind of the strategy that I do, one of the strategies I do. So basically every Friday I do something called a Freebie Friday. And usually it's just to, to go um, to uh, – I, I um, hyperlink it to my profile. And on my profile usually is, my, is a bit.ly link that leads to my website. So remember I talked about all that and I showed you exactly where that all is. So this is just basically I put Freebie Friday, grab your free guide on – how to take the overwhelm out of social media, click the link on the bio. So that's what I'm saying. And then I, at me. Sometimes you, want to, you might want to send them somewhere else. Maybe there's a reason why you would want to send them somewhere else. And a lot of people do that. Like, you know, when, when Brendan Burchard, he's kind of an influencer, which I'll talk about later, I'll, I'll send people to him because he has some great stuff out there. So as you notice, I put about, um, there's the hashtags on the bottom. And like I said, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But I like to do about 10 hashtags. And I switched those hashtags around, but I just kind of wanted to show you. So here's just a post that I've done. It's, it's actually giving them something. So I, I also just want to show you this particular post, right? Um, if it wasn't a business post, see right here, it's right on top of the heart and the, and the comic thing and the, and the talk icon and the little um, send icon. Is something called View Insights, and that's where you would get those insights for a post and see how that post is doing. I always recommend you look at that because some will be off the chart. You know, like you'll get like 400 people looking at it and blah, 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 and some will get one. You want to keep a record of that because you want to continue to post something that's doing good. So that's my recommendation. Um, the next thing is a little bit about connecting and growing, and I'm just going to talk about that a little bit. You know, it's one thing to post things, but there's, there's some important things about connecting and growing that you need to be always doing. Um, so I, re I recommend doing this on a daily basis. So maybe at, at noontime when you go to see, so say you posted something at 10 a.m. All right, so, and then a lot of people have interacted with you. You kind of want to look to see who, who liked your post or seen your post. And then you go to them and, and see if they could be like your ideal client or someone um, that you, you want to um, you follow or someone you just want to see what their posts are about. And you actually start liking some of their posts. And then I recommend on like maybe every fifth, you know, go down to at least five posts. Look at five posts 
like about four or three um, with the heart sign. So you just click that heart sign, and that tells them that you're liking their post. You don't necessarily have to follow them. You can like somebody's post without following them. So then the next thing you want to do is you want to actually maybe comment on one of their posts. And make it intelligent comment. Like, you know, there's a lot of people out there that will write beautiful when it wasn't meant to be a beautiful comment. It's, it was meant to be, what do you think about this idea or this concept? So beautiful doesn't really answer it. So if you're doing that, you're really kind of not being authentic. So you want to, that's a great thing to comment on anyways, a concept one or an idea because then you get your, you know, if, if, if you're posting on something that's relevant to your, if you're commenting on something that's relevant to your field, people are going to view you as an expert, and then they're more likely to maybe follow you in the future, and it could lead to a warm lead at some point. So I always say this to people because when you're connecting and growing, it seems tedious, it's hard, but the bottom line is if you're on a social media application like Instagram, it is all about connecting and, and, and being social. So you want to show that a little bit. And that's where, like, if it's tedious and you don't want to do that, that's where hiring somebody else to do it, like maybe somebody that's working in your office or someone outside. So that's, that's why you really need to think about this. If you don't want to sit there and comment on people's posts and stuff like that, then get somebody to do it. But you don't want to miss out on this opportunity of being on Instagram because it's very powerful. So the long story short is it, while you're growing, as you're growing, people are going to start following you. And, again, it's all related to those hashtags we're, we're going to talk about a little bit later. All right, who to follow? Because it's important to know when you're growing and connecting, who do you want to follow? So, you know, you want to follow people in your industry. You want to follow your competitors. Um, and, 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 and so here's the thing with people in your industry. You don't want to – I don't recommend following like thousands of people in your industry because that's not going to help you out at all. But you do want to, you know, one of the reasons you want to follow them is you want to kind of see what they're doing. So I pick the top people in my industry. That's what I do. You can change that around a little bit for yourself and definitely um, you, you can pick somebody sort of equal to you too. I've done that. Um, you do want to follow your competitors. Again, the top ones I always like to pick. But the, the reason being is because guess what? The people in your industry and your competitors, their followers are actually people who do business with them or may be considered to do business with them, and they may not. So they may see you and connect with you through them, you know, through, through your competitors and through your industry, and they may see you, and they may connect with you. So, like, not everybody does business with me. Not everybody does business with you. They're doing business with somebody else. But not everybody does business with them, you know. So it's like you want to think about, you know, well, if they're not doing business with them, they could do business with me. So thought leaders are very important because, again, um, and I pick thought leaders that would have sort of the same clients I do, you know. So, I mean, basically I can work with any – I'm a B2B company, so I can work with any business to business. So consider that. Um, follow brands you love. You know, like I um, there's a few brands that I really like. I like Skecher. I like uh, Nike. I follow those people. I'll follow, I'll follow Coca-Cola and Starbucks because I see people running their business out of Starbucks. So bottom line is, is I can help those people. So I do follow brands I love. I follow people who inspire me. Um, I follow um, some of my blog readers. So I, and I also follow anybody that could be a potential customer. So for me, a potential customer, again, is business to business. Um, so here we go. Hashtags. So hashtags are really important to Instagram. And I highly recommend that you put the hashtag in the post. I used to recommend something different because I always thought it got a little bit cluttered. And so um, it was suggested by a Instagram guru to actually put the hashtags in the comments. But I realized that immediately my, my um, followers and people liking my posts got lower. So then I started to put them back in 
the um, in the post itself. As hence you saw the example of uh, you know that uh, freebie Friday, which is right here. Let me just go back to it. Um, I I put three dots and a, um, you know, that's when I do my uh, hashtags in the post. So I just want to, before I get even into the hashtags, I just want to go over this a little bit with you. So on your phone you have something called Notes, all right? And I don't know what it is on the Android, but it's whatever the Notes are. Basically what I do is I put all my hashtags in Notes. But I put the three dots above it, and then whatever my post is going to be, I put it on top of that. And then I copy and paste. So to make it easier for me, I have all my hashtags laid out already, and I have different kinds. Like sometimes I do a, a, a action challenge Wednesday, so it's hashtag challenge or whatever. But what I do is I make sure it's separated, so it isn't <clears throat> so it isn't all um, you know jumbled up you know here, so they really can see the hyperlink, which is at BizGo and Social. But they could also click on some of these links too. So. Um, Back to the hashtags again is um, I just wanted to show you how I did that and kind of explain that you you need to utilize other things on your on your on your um, iPhone or Android and notes is a big thing so let's go into like what is a hashtag um, so so first of all why hashtag so and how to do it so. Basically, when you place a hashtag in front of a word with no space, to make, it makes it a hyperlink that becomes searchable. So, you know, think about for those of you who have websites and somebody did it for you, for the Google Analytics and everything and to show up on um, Google, they talk about these things called keywords. So it's very similar to a keyword, okay? So you want to, when it's searchable, you want to make sure at least other people are using these hashtags. So if other people are not using the hashtags, then you probably don't want to use that hashtag because nobody's gonna, nobody searches it. So you want to make sure that people are searching this hashtag. You know, so basically what, are, what is a hashtag? Hashtags on Instagram are used to curate images. So you have, you know, so say you have video marketing. When you, when you, when you click video, hashtag video marketing, you're going to see all these videos or posts about videos. So in hopes that when somebody hits your hashtag, such maybe I, I do a lot of things with social media marketing as a hashtag, you're hoping that maybe for a fraction of a second you may come up on top. Um, and that's why you want to kind of even narrow it down. So the bottom line is, is these, you can use these hyper-focused hashtags that connect your business. So I'll give you sort of an example of that. Is I always like to look at um, this as buckets. In each bucket you have all these hashtags that go deeper, deeper down. So the bottom line is this is you want to think of these hashtags as a ser you know, searchable buckets or categories. So here I, ha I just decided to do, because I figured it would help people that are B2B on things, I use the hashtag, one bucket is hashtag small business, one hashtag is hashtag small business owner, and one hashtag is small business women. I'm actually business women, I should say. So the majority of the people I work with are like small companies, and I do work with a lot of women. So the bottom line is, is I, I, I search these. So how to search? Um, I'm going to kind of show you sort of a little bit, I'm going to go back to that post. I'll go back to this post right now just for the heck of it. On the bottom of, this is my profile, and on the bottom is this little search bar. And if you connect that search bar, you're going to see what comes up on the top where it says eight profile visits. What's going to come up on the top is it's going to be people. It's going to be, um, it will be then hashtags. So I use that, and I'll put in something called small business, and then more stuff will come. They'll give you more suggestions. And so that's where you do your – remember I talked about research? So you have to research your hashtag. So if you research your hashtag, and it will narrow it down, just always make sure you click those hashtags that they suggest to make sure that there's people using that hashtag. And you'll see that it's not all business owners 
I mean, it is business owners that use the hashtags, but it's not all people who, like, for instance, do social media marketing, which is good for me. Or it's not all people who do accounting, which is good for an accountant that maybe wants to use business owners or, or big, their big clients are business owners. So you want to think about that a little bit more and, and how that works. So that's where you do the search. So when I talk about doing the search, that's what I'm talking about. You, you search in there. You always need to you always need to search your um, you always need to search your your uh, hashtags um, and you need to always be changing them. You don't always want to use the same hashtags all the time, you know. So I switch mine around. I sometimes even put hashtag like if today's Monday, so I'll put a hashtag Monday. Um, so. The bottom line is, is that, you know, maybe some, some days I'm actually going to put all hashtags that are related to small business. Maybe some days I'll do all hashtags related to small business owner. Or maybe some days I'll just market to women and just do hashtag small business women and then I'll do other hashtags. And all these, all these hashtags here will be related to business women or business men. So, I mean, I'm just giving you like an example. So you can create your own bucket at any time. I highly recommend it that you always be creating that bucket. You always have to change it up. And that's when I told you about the other research is look at your posts, look at your insights to see what's working. If you're not getting a lot of followers or likes on your, on your, on your posts, then you need to change those hashtags. So that's very important. So I hope that kind of you know, explains hashtags a little bit. So a couple other rules when it comes to hashtags is – that you need to, um, you can only have up to 30 hashtags. Like I said, I don't recommend using the, all 30, but sometimes you may have to. Sometimes you're, you're not seeing a lot of followers or a lot of likes on your post, so put, the, put all the 30, but you can't do more than 30. So, and again, you want to make sure that these hashtags are being, that are, they're searchable. You know, so like maybe if I, like for instance, um, I uh, do a little bit, of dabbling with essential oils, and there's maybe, I'll give you a name of an oil, maybe one of them would be like On Guard, for instance. If I just put hashtag On Guard, I doubt very much anybody searching hashtag On Guard. So that is a clear example of you don't want to use that as a hashtag. So the same thing, maybe, um, <laughs> And it may be a searchable hashtag, I'm not sure, but like in business, maybe there's these things uh, called journals, for instance. Well, maybe if I hashtag journal, blue journal. Okay, hashtag blue journal. And you probably wouldn't have very many hashtag. Not everybody's going to search a blue journal on Instagram. So use common sense, like when you're thinking about it. You want to think that whatever, you just want to know that these hashtags, are going to lead people, business owners, to your posts or different Instagram people to your posts. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about social proof. You know, it's important. Um, you know, in the beginning, you don't have any social proof. Like, nobody knows who you are. You're just starting on Instagram. So you have to establish that. And that is why you're going to be posting and you're going to be doing good posts with some good hashtags. You're going to get some followers. You're going to get people liking your posts. And that will start to establish social proof. I have a little thing here. So, so social proof, how do I get social proof? You want to tell your friends and family when you post. You want to tell your business associates. Um, you want to always use call to actions when you post photos. And you also want to use social proof apps, other apps that will help you um, get out there in a big way. Um, to help you grow. Um, so I'll give you some examples of um, some influencers and how they've gained, they've gained a lot of social proof. And I just wanted to give you some samples of like, their, their posts. So this is a guy named Gary Vee who I love <clears throat> and I follow. Um, you know, and I, I just like him because of his story and how he's grown. Um, he, if you don't like a lot of swearing, sometimes in his videos he does swearing not that I, I like that that much, but that's who he is. So, like, if I did a post and started swearing, everybody would think I was wacko. But that's his, his voice. So I always talk about the voice thing here because we all have a voice. 
So I just want to kind of just show you, he made a post. So his, his post that he did, um, and I'll, before I go to the post that he did, let me just show you something. He has 4.6 million followers. So he has social proof, okay? And you're probably saying, well, I only have 10 followers. But that's okay. Those 10 people are okay. You just need to get more. So that's what you're building on Instagram. You're building your social proof. So here's um, a post that he did. Now, this isn't even anything about his business. But he's actually, so there's a company out there called United Amorites. Which is a bit, which is you know they, they they travel into Dubai and I don't know all the other airports, but Dubai is a big international airport. I I've traveled into Dubai, so I kind of just know, and I use United um, Emirates. So the bottom line is, is he's actually he has social proof, but he's thanking hashtag United Emirates. So all their people, and you know that a lot of people travel to Dubai for business. So he's really hitting. He's hitting a lot of stuff, and then he's then he goes this Arab Gary V, which is hashtag. Now I don't know if that has a lot of. He must have something that he's sending people to do do, but he's doing some amazing things here with social proof, and he's using someone else. So I can simply say, you know, you know, um, thank you, hashtag Brendan Burchard or hashtag Gary V. Or I can even at sign him and bring and send people to him, and I'm starting to establish more social proof. So that's just kind of a you know a sample of other ways to you know that's why I tell you when you're posting and stuff. I mean when you're you know growing and following people, follow the right people, and you know anybody who's in business and and they're and they're especially an online business, and you're trying to reach out to somebody, you want to make sure that it's somebody who um, their ideal client is business owners. So um, the next uh, social proof person is Brandon Bouchard. You know, and he proves it in other ways. He's the number one best-selling author. His six books, um, he's most noted for, he has a, a textbook that he created that's probably used in every single business school in the United States and, and outside. Um, and it's, it's amazing. He has a, a podcast. Um, you know, so he he has some amazing um, things that he does. He's a great person to follow. He has social proof. Again, he's got he's he's see he has littler um, following than smaller following than than Gary V. But he's I mean I would love to have 489,000 uh, followers. So here here's another thing is here's a quote. So he just posts a quote. And um, I like this quote, and that's why I chose that one out of. And it's you can't see it here, but it's actually a video quote, so it kind of moves, and sometimes it has music to it. So it's not about what you have; it's about what you're generating. So the bottom line is, is think about that when you're 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 creating posts. Um, make sure that what you're generating is good. I always I always go with this premise when I'm doing any social media posting. Will this help? my clients and my ideal clients um, because that's really what you're in business to do. You have a service. You have something you want to get out to the world, to get out to your city, get, get out to your state, however you sell or whoever you sell to. Um, you're selling something. Make sure it's the things that you're posting are relevant to them that are really going to help them, just like your service is really going to help them. Um, so next, um, cross-promote on other sites. Um, I always recommend, um, you know, cross-promoting on other sites. So, for instance, on the Instagram app, there's a place where um, you can connect your Instagram account to other um, social media things. So I do Twitter, and I also do uh, Facebook. Those are the two that if I'm going to cross-promote. But also, I always say this, is that we have, you know, we all have an email address. I do use a signature on the bottom of my my email and basically it has all my social media platforms on it because you want people to click those links and 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 follow you so it's just another way of cross promoting i love the idea that i can do everything from my phone i could literally run my business from my phone which is amazing so 
Another thing that I think um, I, I don't get into it a lot here because we're, we're ending our time here now, but I, um, I think story is really – I'm doing a trends webinar now for my business, and stories is really trending. And everybody's you're probably wondering what stories are, so I'll give you an example of that in a minute. But how to get stories is you're going to click this little um, clock up on the top here. You're going to tap here, or you could actually tap here. And you'll come to a page, and and you only have a few seconds, and you you want to do a few things when you do when you do stories here. So I'm going to show you some examples of my stories. So these are my my Instagram stories, and um, what's really cool is when you get to that story page, there'll be like things that you can you can tag, you could put a hyperlink in there, you can put you know you could lead people to your profile, <laughs> you could lead people to your profile. And so I did a couple different um, posts here. Um, I usually do tips. So, um, you know, know your why. I always, I, I always get into knowing your why. Um, so, and I did that before. You've got to know why you're doing something um, and, and what it's going to bring you to or what you expect it to bring it to you because if you don't, you're never going to, like, arrive. So um, another thing that I put one Sunday is that, like, sometimes you have to – I always talk about thinking ahead when you're posting – so another story, and these are like three things that come on for 24 hours and then they disappear. You can save them and archive them, and you can also save these to send them to Facebook stories too. But here's one that I do that um, every once in a while is keep a social media calendar. So, I mean, I always theme my month. So you want to make sure that when you're doing – so I'm kind of giving you tips and then showing you my different stories that I'm sharing with my audience – so these are all things that will help, you know. Um, you know, and, and I'm telling people here in this one is to create a story on Instagram. If you don't start somewhere, it's scary in the beginning, but if you don't start somewhere, it's not gonna it's not gonna go anywhere. You know, it's like you're not gonna you, you're gonna say stories don't work for me. But if you don't try it, and I'm not talking about try it once and then never do it again. I'm telling you, do it every day for a month or two months and watch how you start growing it's a it's it's really awesome and then you know um so i do this is just example of stories and you could see there's this thing like sunday i was that i added to it um i did you can add to, this is a friday post so i did a hashtag friday um so there's different things you could do it play around with it um and just like some more things about stories stories only stay up again for 24 hours before disappearing, so post frequently. So every 24 hours, make sure you're posting. Anyone following you can see that post as many times as they'd like unless they hide you from their story. Um, your story from, your, from their, you know, they'll, they, they can hide you if they don't want to see your story anymore. But I wouldn't worry about those people because those people aren't going to be your clients anyway. Um, you can add geotags. Imagery hashtags, stickers, locations, um, you can, and these are all things that will make this story more visible um, to, to, your, to your potential customers. Interestingly enough, um, there's something called a geotag, which is just a location. So, like, if you're a local business, you want to do a geotag. Um, I do a geotag, too. I mean, I always do Norwalk, Connecticut. Um, but if I'm, I want to reach a bigger crowd, sometimes I'll just, do, I'll, I'll do New York. or So you could do whatever geotag you would like. That's all geotag is. It's a hyperlink that, uh, that hyperlinks a location. So it's kind of the same thing as a hashtag, but it's a, a little bit different because it actually tells you the location. So if you have a live store, it's a great thing to do. So, I mean, the bottom line is, is that Instagram is a great, you know, using, you know, um, Instagram Live, for instance, or a story, it's, 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 it's just, it's a great platform to get um, real-time feedback from followers. So you just want to know that um, the more you post new stories, uh, the more they'll appear on the top of people's feeds. And you're not clogging up their regular feed with just always posting all the time. So my... My, my suggestion to you is learn how, um, you know, learn the correct use of stories, play with it, and, and definitely 
um, start using them. I, you know, I don't have enough time to go into every single little thing about Instagram, but um, right now, um, you know, if you go to um, my website and you click on, um, I have like an Instagram, I, I have an Instagram uh, challenge that I, w- I want to challenge everybody to. It's totally free, but it, for seven days it tells you how to do certain things. And after that seven days, it's my hope that you'll be more, that you'll just be more um, proficient at Instagram. Um, I have about um, several people that just were able to hear the last webinar I did that didn't come out so good because we were having technical difficulties. They're going through it right now, and I, I've got nothing but really good um, feedback on it. So I just challenge you to get more busy. Um, on Instagram, and you will see that it does better than Facebook um, by by a large amount. I mean, you will see the difference within probably a month. And so I highly recommend you to get, um, you know, involved. So take a screenshot of this Insta challenge. Um, as you see, I'm using the bit.ly link, so I'm tracking everybody that comes from here. And then, you know, just enjoy it. And, um, you know, this is it. This is the end. And um, thank you very much. Lorraine, that was terrific. I I took notes because there were things that I missed on the last time you spoke. Uh, I'm sure that there will be people who will have questions for you. And uh, for those of you who are following this now, you'll see that Lorraine has a phone number at the bottom as well as a URL for is gone social and of course you can probably follow her on Instagram how would they find you there Lorraine um, right now I'm actually doing some some work on Instagram uh, so they can follow me on my personal page right now um, which is um, let me just see where where it is right now um, I'm doing some work on my Instagram page, so I took it down for a little bit. At Lorraine Duncan 30, you can follow me. And there you have it. So follow Lorraine at Lorraine Duncan 30 on Instagram. You can call her at the number below or look her up at bizgonsocial.com. Thank you all for listening, and uh, we hope to see you again very soon.